Star Trek DS9 writer begged, insisted, screamed, pleaded for a big Romulan change. Star Trek Deep Space Nine introduced several changes to the Romulans, but one particular alteration was made at the behest of writer Ronald D. Moore. After Star Trek, The Next Generation ended, Moore joined the staff of DS9 for Season 3, which had several episodes involving a tentative alliance between the Romulan Star Empire and the Federation. The Season 3 opener, The Search, Part I, revealed that the Romulans had provided DS9 success defiant with a cloaking device so they could covertly acquire intel on the Dominion. Subsequent Season 3 episodes revealed just what the Romulans intended to do with that information. In Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 3, Episode 17, Visionary, Chief O'Brien, Cole Meany, unearthed a Romulan plot to destroy Deep Space Nine and the wormhole to prevent a Dominion incursion. Weeks later, Improbable Cause and the Die is Cast revealed that the Cardassian's Obsidian Order and the Romulan Tall Shire formed an alliance to destroy the Dominion. Starting life as a standalone episode about Garak, Andrew J. Robinson, Improbable Cause, was expanded into an epic two-parter that changed the course of not just the S9's Dominion War arc, but the presentation of the Romulans in Star Trek. Ronald D. Moore insisted on a big Romulan change in Star Trek DS9 when Improbable Cause was expanded into a two-parter. Ronald D. Moore wrote the conclusion, Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 3, Episode 21, The Die is Cast. However, Moore's biggest change to the Romulans didn't come from anything he wrote in the script. Remembering the episode in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine Companion, Moore discussed how he saw an opportunity to change something he'd hated about the Romulans from as far back as Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1. The quilted Romulan costumes had previously been designed by William Theis, who established the look of the Romulans in Star Trek The Next Generation. Theis's successor, Robert Blackman, deigned not to redesign them to save himself extra work. For Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Blackman fulfilled Ronald D. Moore's request and set about designing a sleeker and more menacing costume for Lovok, Leland Orser, and his fellow operatives. Using the same material, Blackman dyed it darker and substantially reduced the width of the shoulder pads, creating a new-look Romulan costume for future Star Trek appearances. Star Trek DS9 changed the Romulans for the better, until Abrams ruined it. Robert Blackman's sleeker Romulan costumes and their subsequent variations continued to appear right up until Star Trek Nemesis. So too did the idea that, finally, the Romulan Star Empire and the Federation were closer than ever to becoming allies. One of the few interesting things about Nemesis is the parallel between Lieutenant Commander Worf, Michael Dorn, setting aside his anti-Romulan prejudice, and Captain James T. Kirk, William Shatner, doing the same with his own feelings toward the Klingons in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. At the end of Nemesis, it appeared that the Federation and the Romulans would continue working together. Unfortunately, J.J. Abrams' 2009 Star Trek movie threw a spanner in the works with the devastating Romulan supernova and embittered minor Nero, Eric Bana. Nero's hatred of Ambassador Spock, Leonard Nimoy, and the Federation for not doing enough to help defined the plot of Star Trek Picard Season 1, which introduced evil Romulan siblings and the villainous Commodore O, Tamlin Tamita. It was a disappointingly regressive step that threw away a lot of the positive changes that Star Trek Deep Space Nine had brought about during the Dominion War. When Star Trek Deep Space Nine DS9 first aired in 1993, it quickly established itself as a unique addition to the Star Trek franchise. Unlike its predecessors, the original series and the next generation, TNG DS9, offered a darker, more serialized narrative. It focused on the political and social complexities of a space station strategically positioned near a wormhole, making it a hub for interstellar diplomacy, war, and cultural exchanges. Among the numerous alien species populating the show, the Romulans played a pivotal role in the larger Star Trek universe. However, according to one of the show's writers, there was an immense behind-the-scenes struggle to get a major change made to the Romulans' portrayal in the series, a change that would shape the fate of Deep Space Nine and its intricate intergalactic alliances. At the heart of this effort was writer and producer Ron Moore, who later became one of the principal architects of DS9's darker tone and rich political plots. Moore had already developed a reputation for his work on Star Trek The Next Generation, where he wrote several key Romulan episodes. By the time DS9 began to explore Romulan politics more deeply, 
Moore was determined to shift their portrayal from the traditional shadowy antagonist to something more nuanced. The Romulan legacy in Star Trek, the Romulans had always been depicted as a secretive, warlike species with a penchant for espionage and subterfuge. In the original series episode, Balance of Terror, they were introduced as worthy adversaries to the Federation, marking their first foray into the Star Trek universe. By the time of the next generation, the Romulans became a Cold War-era metaphor, constantly lurking on the edges of galactic politics, maintaining an uneasy truce with the Federation while occasionally scheming behind the scenes. But by the 1990s, when DS9 aired, Moore felt that the Romulans had become too one-dimensional. As the Dominion War storyline ramped up and Deep Space Nine evolved into a series about war, loyalty, and betrayal, Moore and the writing team saw an opportunity to shift the Romulans' role from background conspirators to major players in the galaxy's future. The Turning Point In the Pale Moonlight One of the most notable episodes in this Ninus run is In the Pale Moonlight, a morally complex story in which Captain Benjamin Sisko conspires to bring the Romulans into the war against the Dominion through deception and assassination. It's one of DS9's most iconic episodes largely because of its dark tone and the way it challenges the very ideals the Federation stands for. Yet, getting to that point wasn't easy. Moore recalls how much of a battle it was to make the Romulans more integral to the plot. I begged, insisted, screamed, pleaded, Moore reportedly said in interviews years later, explaining how much resistance there was to changing the Romulans' portrayal. The studio executives and even some of the other writers weren't sure about making the Romulans a central focus, given how they had been used as shadowy background figures for so long. They were familiar antagonists, but hadn't had the same kind of character development as the Klingons, who had transformed from enemies to allies in the next generation. Moore saw the Romulans as ripe for deeper storytelling. He wanted to show that they weren't just sneaky villains, but a proud, complex race with their own internal politics, motivations, and struggles. Bringing them into the Dominion War wasn't just about adding another faction to the battlefield, it was about making a statement on the shifting political alliances in wartime and showing how desperation and survival could make even the most unlikely partnerships possible. Resistance from above, despite Moore's passion, there was a great deal of resistance. Star Trek had always been about exploring new worlds and species, but the Romulans were seen as a known quantity, not one that needed further exploration. The studio was nervous about making them a key part of this Nine's war arc, fearing that audiences would see them as too similar to the Cardassians, another major antagonistic species in the series. But Moore persisted. He insisted that the Romulans could bring a different flavor of intrigue to the show. While the Klingons were about honor and warfare, and the Cardassians were about authoritarian control, the Romulans were the chess players, always working behind the scenes to protect their empire. Moore wanted to elevate that aspect, showing that in times of war, even the most calculating species could be pushed into desperate alliances. The payoff eventually, Moore's persistence paid off. The Romulans became an integral part of the Dominion War storyline, culminating in their alliance with the Federation and the Klingons in the battle against the Dominion. The decision to bring the Romulans into the fold added layers of 